Hi Booktube, Lynette here and this video is going to be the mid-year freakout tag. So, um, this is a tag that comes around every year. Um, I did it last year. I don't think I've done it before that. Um, so this is maybe only the second year that I've done it. Uh, but it's all about how your reading's gone so far and possibly freaking out at the, the end of it. Um, anyway, let's just get on with the tag. The first question is the best book that you have read so far this year. Uh, I haven't had any five star reads yet this year. At the point I'm filming this, I'm two thirds of the way, three quarters of the way through Nevermore. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a five star read either. So really, the one that actually springs to mind the most is The Two Week Stand by Samantha Towell. This is a romance novel about uh, Dylan and West. Dylan is jilted at the altar um, on her wedding day but decides to go on a honeymoon to the Maldives anyway. West is a sports star, American sports star, who has to go away um, to straighten himself out a little bit because he, uh, he's been a bit off the rails recently. Anyway, West proposes to Dylan that they have a two-week stand which is the length of the time that they are supposed to be in the Maldives and from there much sex, much romance, lots of falling in love. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. This book made me laugh, it made me cry. I just, I, I really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to rereading it again um, very, very soon because it's just sticking in my brain quite a lot. Um, I quite often have to reread Sam Tao um, not long after she's actually released the book um, and I've read it for the first time. So I'm really looking forward to picking this one up again soon. Question number two is the best sequel that you have read so far this year. I've read a few this year. I haven't really got any that stand out. The only one that really stands out, and it's because it's a recent read, is Dragon Legend by Kevin and Katie Sang. Um, I've only read this uh, about a week ago at the point that I'm filming this. So it is the most recent, so it is sticking in my brain a lot more. Um, Again, this book, uh, the series is based around four children who travel to China and there discover that dragons exist. And they go on a quest to stop the dragon of death from destroying life as we know it. This book picks up directly where the first book left off. So I can't really say very much about it because it would spoil the first book. But I did thoroughly enjoy it. Um, and there, I mean, I, I finished um, talking about books, that I've, sequels that I've read. I finished uh, the Narnia series um, back at the beginning of June, which I really enjoyed. I've been reading a series called Secret Breakers by H.L. Dennis, and I really enjoyed the two uh, sequels that I've read so far in that series. I'm going to be starting the sixth and final book in the series very, very shortly. Um, so, yeah, so there's there's lots. Um, and if you go down and check out my story graph, uh, profile you'll be able to see the books that I've read this year um and and have a look and see what sequels I have read they've all been rated fairly high they've all been like four stars ish um but yes that's that's one of the best that I've read this year question number three is a new release that you've not yet read but want to and for me that book is Threadneedle by Carrie Thomas this is a very very recent purchase um it's about a girl called Anna who has magic, only magic in this world is a sin and when you reach a specific age that's, that magic is bound so that you cannot use it. This is what Anna has been brought up to believe all her life, however she meets two people who change her views and from there they go on a fantasy adventure. I'm really looking forward to picking this one up. I'm probably going to pick it up very very soon. It was a pure impulse buy um it's a signed copy uh and that was what caught my eye when i was in the bookshop but then i read the actual synopsis of the book and was quite intrigued by it so yes i am looking forward to picking this one up very very soon question number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year i don't actually really follow release schedules um I know I've got books by romance authors that are due out later this year. So Corinne Callahan, um, who writes uh, Dragon Shifter novels, she's got a couple of books that are due out later on this year, which I'm looking forward to picking up. Um, 
and I believe that uh, Dragon Legend, I believe the third book, Dragon City, is due out towards the end of this year as well. So I am looking forward to picking that one up. Um, but other than that, I don't really follow release schedules. Um, I have two authors whose books that I follow, uh, or three if I count in Corrine Calhan. Um, so Sam Towell and Kay Bromberg, I talk about them a lot. Um, they're the only ones I really follow. And But again, I'm on a book buying ban, so I'm trying not to buy new books uh, if I don't have to. So yeah, I'm, I'm anticipated releases, it's not really a question I can answer. Question number five is the biggest disappointment of the year. And one of those is um, The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. And I thought it was a fantasy book. It's not. It's historical fiction. Um, historical fiction is not a genre I'm really into that much. I found it very slow going in places and then it would speed up and the pacing was off. And there was just so much information. Um, and I think a lot of it could have been could have been chopped out, to be honest. It was too long, too much detail, and it just wasn't it just wasn't for me in the end, and I won't be moving on to any more of that series. Another book that really disappointed me, and I was really sad about this, was Blood of Dragons by Robin Hobb. In fact, the whole of this series, the whole of the Rainwild series, was a disappointment to me. Um following the high of the Farseer trilogy, the Live Ship Traders and the Tawny Man trilogy, I was going into these books with such high expectations um, and just something about these four books, it just wasn't right and this was the final book in the series, there was no real climax to it, there was no real like ending, like really what happens um, in Dragon Haven which is book two that really should have been the climactic ending of it. And I just, I don't know. Um, I have read since that they, she had a lot of pressure on her with these books, um, purely because of the hype, because I mean, I, I was reading the, this series as it released. So there was a lot of hype um, around them in the fantasy uh, community at that time. And I mean, I'm going back to um, mid 2000s, um, late 2000s. Um, and there was a lot of hype, a lot of expectation that these books were going to be really, really good. So yes, I, this was a disappointment to me. I have been told that the final trilogy in the series is amazing, is going to break my heart, is going to shatter me into tiny pieces. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm just, well, I'm so disappointed by this. So disappointed by this. I think when I reread the series, um, if I ever get around to rereading the series right the way through, if I ever finally read the Fits and the Fall trilogy, um, I think I'll probably skip the series because I think the information that's in here, I think there might be information you need, but I don't think it's information you can live without. Question number six is the biggest surprise so far this year. And for me, that was These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan. I read this right in the middle of June um it's i had it as an arc copy from netgalley it's fantasy romance and i absolutely loved it um i gave it i think i gave it four four and a half stars um i really really enjoyed it uh it's one of the very few netgalley books that i've actually managed to finish and I really really um i'll link my wrap up um no i won't because i haven't filmed my wrap up yet um Go and look it up. It's due out in July and it's a really great book and I'm really looking forward to reading more by Lexi Ryan in the future, especially if there is more released in this world. Question number seven is, do you have a favourite new author? No, not really. Um, I've enjoyed what I've listened to of Lee Bardugo. I enjoy, like I say, I enjoyed the Lexi Ryan book um, and I've really enjoyed the uh, books by Kevin and Katie Sang. That I've read so far this year um, but they're not really new favourites they're not ones that I'm going to absolutely have to buy everything they they write um, but I'm looking forward to exploring more by those three authors specifically um, as the year goes on. Question number eight is your newest fictional crush and that's easy that is West Oakley from The Two Week Stand. He is just ugh 
and I say that I say that having watched uh, Shadow and Bone as well, where I fell in love with the Darkling um, because I just adore Ben Barnes. I think he's gorgeous. Um, but yes, West Oakley, he is um, an American sports star. I can't remember which sport specifically that's escaping me right now. Um, but he uh, he's just so funny, so feisty. He won't. He's respectful as well. So He's aware that Dylan has issues. The first night that he meets her, she's extremely drunk and throws herself at him, literally. And he says no. Um, and he doesn't take advantage. And he's just such a yummy, 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 yummy. Um, I, I, Yeah, go read the two-week stand. I absolutely loved it. It was brilliant. Question number nine is your newest favourite character. And I'm thinking it is actually the Darkling. Um I just, well, there is a line in Shadow and Bone um, that the Darkling says that everybody was raving over and wanted to hear um, said in the actual TV series. And the way it's delivered in the TV series, yes, I can understand why. I didn't get the same depth of feeling from the actual audiobook. Um, maybe I would have if I'd read it on the page. But uh yes i just i think he's such a tortured soul and i think he really does need some love and understanding um although i don't know that that would heal him and i've got a horrible feeling everything goes wrong for him um i'll see what happens as i work my way through siege and storm and Marian rising but yes for the moment the darkling is my newest favorite character question number 10 is a book that made you cry um, I've talked about this book already and that is The Two Week Stand by Samantha Towell. Again, um, so Dylan is jilted at the altar. Um, she then has this amazing connection with West. Um, obviously there's a bit of, you know, angst for the two of them, which causes some upset. There's issues with her family, which causes her some upset. So yes, it did make me cry. Um, no books this year have made me sob like an absolute baby uh but that one is the one that definitely springs to mind when i think of books that made me cry this year question number 11 is a book that made you happy and i'm going to say weird sisters by terry pratchett basically the world of terry pratchett makes me happy and i thoroughly enjoyed reading weird sisters um when i picked that up it's uh the first i think in the witches si no i don't think it is the first i think it might be the second in the witches series but it's the one where the witches really seem to come into their own and you really get to know Granny Og um, and a, a Magrat and the name of the third one escapes me. It's Pinch Lines from Shakespeare. Um, it is a real take on, I think, Hamlet uh, from Shakespeare. Uh, and I just love Terry Pratchett's writing. He's always made me laugh and I just look forward to continuing the series um, and reading a few more from him this year, hopefully. So question number 12 is the most beautiful book that you have bought this year and there is an actual tie. I'm going to go with Camelot by Giles Christian. I love, love this kind of bronze shiny cover. Lancelot, uh, which you can just about see on the shelf behind me, was a gorgeous gold, shiny gold. Um, I just think it's beautiful and it's going to look stunning on my shelves. And then I also, again, I've already talked about it, um, Threadneedle. I love this cover. It's um basically it's made to look like embroidery so there's roses a castle the moon um and it all looks like embroidery and i love embroidery anyway i, I actually do a lot of counter cross stitch so um yes this the these two are the most beautiful books that i've bought this year and then question 13 the final question um sorry i keep looking at the clock because i'm actually on a time um i've got to be done in the next five minutes um so question 13 is books that you need to read this year for the rest of this year. I'm going to say Threadneedle, which I just held up, but I put it down. I'm not going to pick it up again because it's a hardback and it's heavy. So I'm um, Camelot by Giles Christian, which is the story of Galahad, the Silmarillion, because I'm halfway. Th I'm not even halfway through. I'm a good third of the way through, but I need to finish this. I promised myself that when I bought the Tolkien books earlier on this year, that I would actually read them this year. So I need to finish it so I can move on to the next book in that kind of stable of books. The Institute by Stephen King. I picked this up last year and I still haven't got to it. Stephen King, in my 
teens and 20 early 20s was one of my absolute favorite authors i read elevation by him last year um and i read rose matter by him last year and rose matter is on my brain at the moment so i'm thinking i'm probably going to read it again very very soon but i need to read the institute as well i really like the premise of this one um and yes i want to get to it very very soon and then two more books that i want to get to this year the Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince. It's a short story based in the realm of the Elderlings world. I should have read it before I read the Tawny Man trilogy, apparently. Oh, well. Um, but again, it's really short. You know, I should get to this very, very soon. Um, but again, it tells the story of an historical character that is referred to in the Tawny Man trilogy quite a bit. So I'm looking forward to picking that one up. And yes, I'm going to say it. I need to get on with the Fits and the Fall series. I know it's going to hurt, but I've got to do it. So the first book in that series is Fall's Assassin. I, at the very least, by the end of this year, want to have picked up this book. And then another chunker that I want to get to this year. And again, I keep looking at it on my shelves. But it, again, it is another book in a series. And it is Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan. This is book six in the Wheel of Time series. Um this i think is where we start getting into a bit of a slump um i can't remember who this specifically follows i think i can't really remember um i read these books many many years ago book six i think is the first of the books hang on let's just have a look and see when it was yeah so i think but i think up to book six was released when um, I was doing my first read through. I think maybe book seven and eight um, is where I had seven, eight, nine is where I had to wait for books to come out. But I enjoyed this series until I got to book nine um, on the first read through. And then I gave up. I was waiting for books to release. Books six, seven, eight, nine are referred to as the slump. Um, so this book's mahoosive i mean again i think it's well if you include the glossary it's over a thousand pages um i think the story itself is just shy of a thousand pages yeah so the story itself is 993 pages i keep thinking about it i keep looking at it i finished the fires of heaven uh, a few months ago um but i want to get on and i want to push through because apparently t books 10 to 13 are amazing and round the story round it off and finishes the story really, really well so i really need to get on and finish this series and at least getting through book six this year if i've only read two books in the series this year um i will be happy but i definitely want to read at least two of them this year so and this will be the second so those are my answers to the mid-year freak out tag Ooh. I've got a lot to read by the end of the year, haven't I, based on that last question? Um, so what would your answers be? I'm going to put the questions in the information box down below. If you want to uh, have a go at the video, then I tag you in it. Um, send me a link and I can then watch it. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already. I normally upload videos every Monday at 6.30pm. There might be a couple of bonus videos in the month of July um because there are videos on top on top of this that i filmed and i will speak to you all again soon bye